Hi guys! Welcome to the weekly episode of Kiyomi TV. Yay. Today I'm going to show you my 10 gallon tank, which has my betta, Jackson Pollock. He's a crown tail dragon betta. We're actually going to show you how to introduce new fish to your betta tank. If it's anything smaller than a 5 gallon, chances are you're not going to be able to introduce other types of fish to your tank just because bettas tend to be very territorial and 5 gallons usually isn't enough for um, any other type of schooling fish or anything like that to live in. I would probably only suggest maybe snails if you're going to try to do that in a smaller tank. Some bettas are extremely aggressive so they actually can't live with other types of fish so just keep that in mind. In this case Jackson He's pretty good. I mean, he flares at his own reflection, but uh, generally he's pr pretty docile, which is why um, I decided to do it. So let's start! In addition to the 5 gallon minimum, I suggest that you have a heavily planted tank so that all the fish have a place to hide in case they're being harassed. You can see in my tank that the back right hand corner is extremely heavily planted. I also have a TARDIS as well as a bunch of rocks and driftwood to give more shelter to the fish. In terms of which fish are compatible, you will usually want fish that swim in the middle or bottom of the tank as bettas tend to usually spend most of their time near the top of the water. Betta fish are labyrinth fish, meaning they have organs that allow them to breathe air outside of water. Jackson is a little special in terms of this. He likes to spend his time all over the tank and he actually spends a lot of time swimming along the bottom looking for leftover food. I chose pygmy corridors for several reasons. Firstly, they are very small and require less space. Larger species of corridors are not suitable for a 10 gallon tank as they are schooling fish and need to be kept in groups of 5 or more. I have 6 pygmy corries in here and I could probably go up to around 10 without worrying about the bio load in space. I prefer to keep my tank understocked for better water quality. Secondly, they're not very colorful but still very beautiful fish. Oftentimes, bettas mistake brighter colored fish as other bettas, or because of their brighter colors, the fish become easy targets. Thirdly, they're extremely fast fish, so most fancy bettas would not be able to catch them even if they tried. Finally, they're peaceful fish who will not nip the fins of your betta, so you don't have to worry about their tails becoming shredded. I also just really love Cory's and find their behavior extremely entertaining. Just look how cute they are swimming around in the tank! So how do you add your fish after choosing the right tank mates? First, you will want to quarantine your fish. I don't do this myself as I purchase my fish from a reputable local fish store where they quarantine the fish before selling them. This is definitely necessary though if you don't have a trustworthy source. Second, you will want to acclimate your new fish to the water conditions of your current tank. Also make sure that your tank is already cycled. If your tank is not cycled, your fish can die from ammonia or nitrate poisoning. I put my quarries in a big bowl and added some of my tank water into the bowl with a turkey baster. I added more water every 5 minutes until around 75% of the water in the bowl was the tank water. Third, you will want to take your betta out of the tank. Bettas are extremely territorial and they will often attack fish they believe are trespassing in their territory. So I put Jackson in his mason jar. Next, you will want to dim your lights. Bright lights stress out new fish, so it's best to keep the tank dark when you add them in. I gave the quarries about half an hour to adjust to the tank without Jackson in there. Once your new fish are settled in, it's time to add your betta back into the tank. Keep the lights dim and make sure to acclimate your fish before you're putting him back in. You can turn the lights back on if you notice that your fish is being relatively peaceful. It is normal for some chasing to happen, but be prepared to separate them if it does not get any better. As you can see here, Jackson does peck at some of the fish a few times, but he's not being as aggressive as some other bettas that I've seen. So there you have it! Within half an hour, the Corys and Jackson were getting along perfectly in the tank. Keep an eye out to make sure that you don't see any other signs of aggression. Make sure you have a backup plan in case things don't work out. Most local fish stores will take back your fish if it doesn't work out. Otherwise, have another tank prepared so that you can separate them should things go badly. Remember, having tank mates is only a possibility for some bettas. Judge your betta's personality. Some just do not do well with other fish in their tank. So that's it guys. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Good luck. Bye! So I put Jackson in his mason jar. Mason jar. <laughs>